Angelina Grimke was born to wealth and privilege on a plantation in Charleston, South Carolina in 1805. The family owned many slaves, including field hands and household servants. Her father, John Grimke, was a state's chief justice. He fathered 14 children, both white and African American. Angelina and her older sister, Sarah, grew up sensitive to the injustices of slavery, not only because they lived on a plantation where they could see the brutality of slavery, but also because they knew that some of the slaves were their own brothers and sisters. While Angelina was still on her father's slave plantation, she was already speaking out against the practices of slavery and did her best to convince her family of its injustice. Only her sister, Sarah, was persuaded. In a diary entry from February 6, 1829, 24-year-old Angelina wrote that she rebuked her brother Henry for whipping a slave boy. He very openly acknowledged that he meant to give him such a whipping, he would cure him of doing the same thing again, and that he deserved to be whipped until he could not stand. I remarked that would be treating him worse than he would treat his horse. Because of her belief that slavery was abominable and the many conflicts she was running into with her own family, Angelina moved north to Pennsylvania in 1829. She ended up living with her sister, Sarah Grimke, who had the same beliefs. Both sisters eventually joined the American Anti-Slavery Society. While living in Philadelphia, Angelina started to read The Liberator, an anti-slavery newspaper published by William Lloyd Garrison. She was so enthralled with the publication that she wrote an emotional letter to the paper that was published without Angelina's permission. If persecution is the means which God has ordained for the accomplishment of this great end, emancipation, then I feel as if I could say, let it come. For it is my deep, sullen, deliberate conviction that this is a cause worth dying for. Her letter propelled her to the national spotlight on the fight against slavery. Using her newfound notoriety as an abolitionist and her pedigree of being an upper-class southern woman from a slave plantation, she started her career writing for her cause. In 1836, Angelina wrote a pamphlet entitled An Appeal to the Christian Woman of the South. Using arguments directly from the Bible, she argued that slavery depicted in the Bible and southern slavery were two entirely different things. She argued that according to biblical law, southern slavery was illegal and immoral. I would just ask whether American slaves had become slaves in any of the ways in which the Hebrews became servants. Did they sell themselves into slavery and receive the purchase money in their own hands? No. Did they become insolvent and by their own imprudence subject themselves to be sold as slaves? No. Did they steal the property of another and were then sold to make restitution for their crimes? No. Did their present masters as an act of kindness Redeem them from some heathen tyrant to whom they have sold themselves in the dark hour of adversity? No. Were they born in slavery? No. Her impassioned appeal drew attention from both the North and the South. In the North, her fame grew and she became a public speaker. In the South, her pamphlet was publicly burned. Angelina's mother was told that if her daughter ever returned to Charleston, she would be immediately arrested. In February of 1838, Angelina made three appearances before the Massachusetts Legislative Committee in the Boston Senate. She was the first American woman to ever address a legislative body. Before a packed crowd, Angelina spoke on behalf of the 20,000 Massachusetts women who placed their names on anti-slavery petitions to the legislature. I stand before you as a southerner, exiled from the land of my birth, by the sound of the lash and the piteous cry of the slave. I stand before you as a repentant slaveholder. I stand before you as a moral being endowed with precious and inalienable rights, which are correlated with solemn duties and high responsibilities. As a moral being, I feel that I owe it to the suffering slave and to the deluded master, to my country and the world, to do all I can to overturn a system of complicated crimes built up upon the broken hearts and the prostate bodies of my countrymen in chains and cemented by the blood and sweat and the tears of my sisters in bond. On May 17th of that same year, Angelina spoke at an anti-slavery convention at the newly built Pennsylvania Hall. She took the podium as a mob surrounded the building, screamed obscenities, 
throwing rocks and breaking windows. Undaunted, she delivered her speech to an audience of some 3,000 people, calling the attackers deluded beings. What is a mob? What would the breaking of every window be? What would be the leveling of this hall be? What if the mob should now burst in upon us, break up our meeting, and commit violence upon our persons? Would this be anything compared to what the slaves endure? I will lift up my voice like a trumpet. As a southerner, I feel it is my duty to stand up here tonight and bear testimony against slavery. I was brought up under its wing. I witnessed for many years its demoralizing influences and its destructiveness to human happiness, but I have never seen a happy slave. Once Angelina finished her speech, whites and blacks walked out of the hall arm in arm, partly as a display of solidarity, but also to protect their black comrades from the mob gathered outside. On the next day, the hall was burned down by the very same rioters. Angelina was immensely shaken by the events of that night. She retired to the country with her husband and to raise her family. However, the fear she faced did not silence her spirit and her desire to see every slave free. On January 1, 1863, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed any slave in the rebelling South. Also, for the first time, blacks were allowed to enlist in the U.S. Army, 200,000 African Americans enlisted and served during the Civil War. Hardened by the Emancipation Proclamation, Angelina came out of retirement on May 14, 1863 to give her last recorded public speech. She addressed the Women's Loyal National League in New York, New York. I came here with no desire and no intention to speak, but my heart is full. My country is bleeding. My people are perishing around me. But I feel as a South Carolinian that I am bound to tell the North, go on, go on, never falter, never abandon the principles which you have adopted. After the United States was racked by the five years of civil war, the abolitionist movement finally had something to cheer. On January 31, 1865, the Congress passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery in the United States and provides that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. Angelina died October 26, 1879, knowing that in the end, her entire life's goal of seeing American slaves set free had finally been accomplished.